Hello everyone, welcome back on my channel Lesson Plan Corner. Today in this video we are going to see what was educational philosophy of Paolo Freire. Okay, so we are going to discuss on this topic and it is very important topic of, of B.E.D. So today in this video we are going to cover all those points. You can see here the list of points that we are going to cover in this video. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel. Okay, so we are going to see introduction of Paolo Ferre, who was Paolo Ferre, what was his aim of education and philosophical ideas of Paolo Ferre. Also, we are going to see in this video and also we are going to see curriculum or syllabus of according to Paolo Ferre teaching method and discipline according to Paolo Ferre. So let's start. Let's see what was educational philosophy of Paolo Ferre. Okay, so here you can see. Paolo Freire was basically one of the most influential philosopher of 20th century. Here you can see he was one of the most influential philosopher of 20th century. Okay. Now coming to his uh, birth, we, we uh, Paolo Freire was born in 1921 in northeast of Brazil. So he was he born in Brazil. And his childhood was spent in poverty. So, so he decided to transform the life of other people, to uh, transform the life of oppressed people, poor people through education. And af after that, he also started to give free education to oppressed people also that we will discuss later in this video. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, be he became grammar teacher while still in high school until 1964 so he when he was uh, he was studying he started teaching to other people and he started teaching english grammar to other people he was professor of house history and philosophy of education until 1964 so until 1964 he was he was a professor of history and philosophy in 1964 he was jailed by new government for his educational work so in 1964 government uh, he jailed him for some purpose uh, actually this uh, paulo freire he was giving free education to all the people and the new government there he jailed him for this purpose because they don't want they don't want him to give free education to the oppressed people so that new government jailed him and after 1964 uh, this new government exiled him from uh, brazil government banned all his learning theories and exiled him from brazil uh, from 1964 to 1980 okay okay so now let's see he wrote his famous book pedagogy of oppressed in 1970 and this book was his popular book okay that he wrote in 1970 pa paulo freire died in 1997 due to heart failure so this much is enough for the introduction of paulo freire you can write this much this much this much is enough okay now let's see aim of education according to paulo freire what was his aim of education first is to transform the work especially oppressed people edu through education means he wanted to transform the life of oppressed people through education because he himself has seen uh, poverty in his childhood that is why he had decided to change the life of other people through education okay <clears throat> second you can see here develop awareness in people so he wanted to uh, bring awareness you know in thought process in thought process of other people through education to achieve personal freedom and social justice through education so he wanted to achieve freedom for other people <coughs> okay for education and for social justice he wanted freedom fourth is freedom to speak think and act so he wanted other people especially oppressed people to have freedom to speak to act to behave and to whatever they wanted to do okay fifth is creation of person with different ability for different fields so he wanted to produce uh, you know uh, 
many peoples many educated peoples for different different fields uh, you know through their abilities okay now let's see on uh, we will see educational thought of paulo freire so he basically criticized banking system because he used to think that the whole education process process work like banking system and that stifles learner creative potential in school whatever teacher uh, teaches students just have to listen all that okay so it is basically kind of a working a banking system where teacher invest and student has to kind of listen whatever teacher is telling to them so basically it is kind of only teacher centered education not a student centered education okay now let's see in this system learner are handled like a blank slate and information is accumulated by instructor so basically in banking system teacher a uh, teacher is writing or teacher is teaching whatever they want and student is like a blank slate and teacher has to teach whatever they want to teach to students no one can teach anyone else no one can learn alone people learn together after that what paulo freire says that no one teaches alone no one earn alone and people learn together so in this teaching learning process both are getting benefited teacher as well as students no one is no one is earning alone both of them learning something from that teacher as well as student also okay <clears throat> now let's see syllabus according to paulo freire first is he was deep believer of jesus so he wanted to include religious religious book so he was a very believer he was a, he was a deep believer of jesus so that is why he wanted to in, uh, to include the religious book and after that he was believer of he was very much impressed by karl marx so he wanted to include social studies also where you know people or students can learn about a uh, great people great uh, you know immense also games languages arts social and philosophy also he wanted to include maths history geography in simple language okay so he wanted math history geography in simple language only after that teach uh, we will see what what uh, should be the quality of teacher according to paulo freire teacher should not see i am more powerful teacher should not follow autocratic mo model and teacher should not try to control the students so these are all the quality that teacher must have in them like teacher should not say that i am powerful in teaching learning process there should be a regular communication between teacher and students no one is superior no one is inferior both are same both are learning something both are you know in teaching learning process teacher is teaching and student student is, student is uh, learning he means both are earning something okay and discipline according to him do not value discipline so he he did not give that much importance to discipline to strict discipline he was against you know strict discipline constant communication between teacher and student so he wanted that you know there should be communication between teacher and students <clears throat> because he wanted that education should be you know child centered so there should be communication between teacher and student because he thought that teacher and student both are same no one is inferior and no one is superior third is democratic discipline so he wanted democratic discipline he wanted freedom for all children for teacher as well as students also in in education system he thought that both are the same so this was my video on the topic educational philosophy of john of paulo freire i hope you like this video if you like this video please do not forget to like share and subscribe we will meet in next video till then bye and take care